Hey, it's Wednesday, so we must be talking about wine. I'm Tracy Burns, and it's got to wine with me, at least for a little bit. This really cool guest next was actually, like, in my world, corporate America, believe it or not, and decided to pursue the one thing he loved. Bill Price, owner of Classic Wines, with us now via Skype. Bill, I'm so glad that you're here because you took something that was, I guess, a hobby at one point, and you kind of said, I'm going to do this full time. You co-founded... TPG Capital, which was originally Texas Pacific Group, and you left it. What made you do that? Well, it was uh, it was a great run at TPG, you know, fifteen years. But uh, you know, there's more to life than leveraging cash flow. And, <laughs> uh, <laughs> some people might not know that, but it's actually true. Um, I uh, I have always had a love of wine, and uh, while at TPG, we acquired Behringer and ended up owning it for five years and making 10 times our money. And so I found a nice combination of being able to do uh, uh, investments that were attractive and also be in a business where it's all really about the passion for the product. And uh, that's very rewarding. I thought one of the things that was so interesting in your um, notes was that now you work with people that truly love what they do. Like nobody, nobody down on Wall Street says, you got to see this spreadsheet, right? It's the coolest thing ever. Like nobody says that, but yet... I'm sure you meet people in the wine world every day that say, you've just got to taste my wine. Oh, absolutely. And and people can even remember what, what was the first wine yeah. when the light bulb really went off and said, oh, my God, this is something special, a product I want to be associated with. The other great thing about it is I think it, it, it allows me to be out in the vineyards uh, and out, out in nature watching around, walking around while I do my job, which is uh, terrific. I'm very jealous, I have to tell you. So did you then go to start the VinCraft Group, which now is basically doing wine acquisitions? Yeah, so I, I uh, did a couple of acquisitions on my own and then teamed back up with uh, Texas Pacific Group or TPG Capital to, uh, and uh, a few of my former partners, uh, Pete Scott and Walt Clins from the Behringer deal. And uh, since then, we've done uh, additional acquisitions. So. I'm now involved with six uh, six separate wine brands. Right. So how do you do this? You know, there's like that wine joke, right? If you want to lose a million, buy a vineyard or you want something like that, right? I mean, it's, it's, yeah. it takes a really long time to start to see profits. So you have six different vineyards basically going on now. How do you manage all that and make money at the same time? Well, the, the key is that it's a business, not a hobby. And like any business, you need a good strategy and you need uh, good people. Uh, I, I focus on the very high end of wine, uh, the ultra premium market. And in that market, what, what you need to do is you need to have a point of view with your product. You need to have a winemaker and a piece of property that produces distinctive grapes and then make a world-class wine because... You know, there, there's over 3,000 wineries on the west coast of California, and, and nobody needs another one that's going to be making uh, medi mediocre wine. So the high end, though, d didn't we see that kind of slip off during the recession? People kind of, you know, I don't think they stopped drinking wine, but they drank less, ex they drank less expensive wines, right? That's right. I mean, no question people trade down, and, you know, people would say, oh, my God, these people have spent years getting on the Kistler Unless they're not going to stop by Kistler. Well, you know, if working at Lehman Brothers, yeah, you probably did stop by Kistler. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, the wine business has a little bit of a lag in the cycle. So it really hit us in 2009, 2010. Uh, but then 2011 uh, was a good year, a strong year. And then uh, this year is, is gangbusters, really. We've had a couple of short harvests, which have constrained supply which actually has been helpful uh, to, uh, to get, you know, any excess inventory out of the market and uh, set things up well for the coming year. I think it's really interesting, though, because, you know, there's much like, you know, any hobby that you try to make money on, you're coming at it from a business, ac within a business acumen, which I think gives you more of an opportunity to succeed. Because as you said, 3,000 different wines out there. How do you differentiate yourself? Uh, just in California alone, how do you differentiate yourself? Yeah, it really has to be about uh, starting with the grapes. I mean, you can you can uh, uh, make a, a, a good wine with, with average grapes, but you can't make a great wine with average grapes. But first you have to know the few very specific sites, and really you're talking about a limited number of acres in all of California. 
that have the potential to produce world-class wine. And then you need a winemaker who understands that site and has a point of view about the type of wine you want to make. You know, there's a huge variety of choices you make in terms of how how ripe the grapes are, your alcohol levels, whether you put oak into the flavoring or not. And the winemaker, in some sense, is like a chef creating a dish. And it's the same as a great restaurant. No, the world doesn't need another restaurant, but there's always room for an inspired chef who's creating something unique. So is that why you, you moved on to your most recent uh, effort, Three Sticks? Because that seems to me to be like a, a pretty personal venture for you. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I give a lecture at the UC Davis called uh, Don't Put Your Name On It, Another Secret to Making Money in the Wine Business. But uh, that one is a little... <laughs> That it one is a little personal. Uh, my nickname was uh, Philly Three Sticks growing up in Hawaii. So uh, Three Sticks is, is sort of my personal stamp on the business and the, the winery with which I try to make the wine that's most personal to me. So it's, it's my own vision. I have some terrific partners and and also am able to take advantage of sourcing from the Durrell Vineyard, which I own, which is one of the world's great vineyards. And you're working with Gavin, Gavin, right? On that one, Gavin Channon, he was uh, one of Forbes 30 under 30 in food and wine. I mean, he's only 26 years old. Yeah, it's a little scary. Uh, right. I was, uh, looking at his resume, and it said 2009 graduate UCLA. I was like, wow. holy moly. But uh, <laughs> Gavin, uh, Gavin is a tremendously talented winemaker. Uh, he's got his own brand, Channon, and then we're, uh, we're collaborating on a new venture. We're uh, just just getting our winery together, and we'll be uh, producing uh, producing uh, some great wine down there from uh, the Endocito and, and in the Santa Rita area uh, this coming harvest. So what what kind of trends are you seeing in the wine industry these days? Well, I always talk about trends in, in two contexts. One, there's sort of long-term cycle trends in the wine business, and the biggest one is just higher quality. The quality of wine being made around the world today is so much higher than it was uh, even 15, 20 years ago. Uh, so that's sort of an ongoing macro trend. The, uh, the, the stylistic trends are shorter term. So right now, uh, a lot of people are saying they want lower alcohol wine. They're saying they want wine uh, with a greater acidity, which makes it a better food wine. And they're saying that they'd like, uh, like their wine to be made more naturally uh, with less uh, chemical influence. So those are probably three of the, the big trends going on right now in the high end of the wine. And in your little world, what project are you most excited about right now? Oh, uh, I'm, I'm ter- tremendously excited about the 2012 harvest, uh, knock on wood. Uh, the way grape growing works is you start with 100% potential at the beginning of the year, and then things happen to you. <laughs> yeah. And other, other things go on during the year. And we are having, so far, a terrific growing season. And so being out there watching the grapes uh, come into their full potential, it's looking so far like 2012 is going to be an absolutely extraordinary year for uh, uh, California grapes. That is really good to know. You know, the one thing I ask all entrepreneurs, and I'm going to ask you too, is... When did you know it was time to leave the comforts of a TPG? You know, you're getting a paycheck, you're, you're in a pretty secure business, to take a risk and to go out and do something you love. I mean, did you sock money away? When, when did you know it was right to say, I'm doing this full, full, full steam ahead? That's a, that's a very tough question, um, but it was, just, it was more of a personal thing. Yes, I, I made enough money that I didn't have to continue to work for a paycheck and had enough money to invest into the wine business to do something I love. Uh, and it was just, you know, 15 years the business had grown worldwide. It was now 24-7. I was traveling, you know, internationally 20 to 30 times a year, and uh, that takes a toll. And uh, it, I was just ready to replant. I was ready for a change, and it's been really exciting uh, to be working with this sort of uh, artistic uh, people with a different sense. It has, of course, its own challenges. Yeah, but, uh, it, it, uh, it's been a phenomenal change for me. And if people people uh, often ask me, uh, wow, you must have seen, uh, you know, 2008 coming since you left in 2007. And really it was more about uh, my personal uh, my personal agenda and what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Well, it was a good statement of my life. It was good timing, and it's not so bad to have your office be a vineyard. You know, if people are looking for your wines, where should they go? You got a website you can give us? Absolutely. Uh, each of our brands has their own website, and so I'll just run through them real quick. Uh, Kistler uh, Vineyards, Outstanding Chardonnay, Costa Brown, probably one of the most sought-after Pinot Noirs in the world. 
Gary Farrell, one of the original uh, Russian River uh, wineries, Bukela, outstanding Napa Valley Cabernet, and then uh, my own Three Sticks project. Each has their own wine uh, website, and you can buy wine or at least get on the mailing list uh, to buy wine in the future at, at all of them. And then look for the uh, new Price Cannon project. We haven't nailed, named it yet, but uh, we have a website on Price Cannon. Well done. And I've had that Kisto Chardonnay, and it's awesome. Bill, I can't thank you for, enough for being with us and taking the time to talk and share your story. I think it's really inspiring, and people need to hear this kind of stuff. Bill Price, owner of Classic Wines out in sunny California. Thank you so much, sir. Absolutely. Great, Stacey. Have a great day. Yeah, you too. It's good stuff when your office is outside and you get to walk through the fields and call that a meeting. Imagine. It's great. That's it for me. I'll see you next week. Go have a glass of wine.